You know, I feel like if I'm gonna be channeling Wanda, I should probably work on my back bend because she's really good at it. <laughs> Come on, noodles. <laughs> Look out, Thanos. Where do I put you? I don't have any pockets. In between my dress and pajama pants? Whoa, that's our little secret. Hello. Are you ready for another episode of but Naked Vintage? Or Bat Naked Vintage? The alternative title that apparently you guys cannot unhear. It's fine. So much like a lot of the world's population right now, I am obsessed with WandaVision. <laughs> Hello? Now, yes, unfortunately, it did just end, and I'm still s quietly sobbing to myself at night about it. Hi. Got something to say, Peter? No playing in the streets. Eat your green vegetables. Now, if you're new here or you are not familiar with my But Make It Vintage series, take a recognizable character, redo their look or their costume into a different time period. Because the basic premise of WandaVision is But Make It Vintage, I wanted to take a little spin at my girl Wanda's costume. So initially, I had plans to do one of her Avengers costumes, and then the finale episode hit. I would like to imagine this is the scenario that went on in my brain. So I think for this design, general basis of it on that final armor, because it is just... Who am I blowing that case at? I don't know. I think I also kind of want to sprinkle in a little bit of her Halloween costume look in there too, because I think that's super cute and super vintage-y. Because WandaVision focuses on old sitcoms, I thought I would stay within that kind of realm. Something I've always loved is the work of George Millier. He's kind of the father of visual effects. If you've seen Hugo, that's basically the storyline. <laughs> a lot of the women are just fantastically costumed, Edwardian, ethereal, all of the visual clutter, which is my jam. So long story short, basically, I think it would be fun to take Wanda's armor and turn it into silent film costume a la George Millier. Hello, baby. Welcome to my lair. Can you smell the coffee I spilled on the floor three weeks ago? Let's get to work. If you've seen the finale, you know that her armor looks something like this. I look like the substitute teacher solely here to let you watch movies. So taking these elements, <laughs> I wanted, taking the elements of this fun, oh my god, oh my god. So taking the elements of this finale costume, I came up with this. I want to keep that structured corset bodice, have a little capelet, this cover-up thing out of a more sheer fabric, a headpiece, pink tights, like her Halloween look, all the while having a more sort of Edwardian hairstyle, while hopefully still keeping it recognizable as a Scarlet Witch and Elizabeth Olsen. I said stay there. My next step, stay. Head to the craft store, get some really thin foam. If we're gonna make this bodice, try to use a foam that is structured but not too structured because we ran into this problem when I made my version of the book dress. Listen, house, if you could stop creaking and groaning for like... Okay. quite literally looked like Oscar the Grouch, tries dark academia. So in hopes of not looking like a literal garbage can, I'm gonna try to make this corset as structured as I can. And yes, I stored my mic in my bra. Like that weird aunt that you just gave a $20 bill. All right, enough stalling. Let's head to the craft store. I gotta say the worst part of going anywhere is having to actually take my PJ pants off. Darn it, society. <sighs> are cold. Good morning. You know what time it is? Pizza time. 
No. It's time to wrap me in duct tape. <sighs> This is a very common method in cosplaying and armor making. I did this once when I made a muscle suit for my Spider-Man cosplay. Are you from a fashion show? The same general idea, except not my entire body. Let me tell you, you don't know what swamp ass is until you're covered in plastic wrap and duct tape. <sighs> Just take my word for it. Basically just make myself like a duct tape bathing suit. My body is ready. Now to do this, I'm going to uh, require the help of my handy dandy husband. Nothing says intimacy quite like suffocating your partner's skin cells for art. Okay. That's right, this activity covers all five love languages. Acts of service, quality time, physical affection, gift giving, <laughs> and words of affirmation. It's so hard to do it around those weird angles. Don't call my butt a weird angle. No. No, but this process is pretty simple. Uh, you wrap yourself in plastic wrap so the duct tape doesn't stick to you. It does vibrate and tickle really bad. But basically, your helper is gonna make you look like a truck stop microwave burrito. the design that I'm thinking for the bodice. This is gonna be difficult. One of the weirdest things I've done in video. Don't mind me, just drawing on my crotch with the Sharpie. Okay. Here's Nick using a gut hook on me like I'm a prize bass. <laughs> nice. I feel like I just came out of my cocoon. I'm gonna get to work on drawing more accurate lines and then we can start cutting out all of these stripey doos. If you're going to do this yourself, I highly recommend labeling everything properly. It saved me a ton of time. And then I just cut out all these little pattern pieces, like little neckties for robot businessmen. Okay, one slight wardrobe change later because it's freaking freezing in here. So at the craft store yesterday, I did get six millimeter foam, which I usually tend to gravitate towards eight millimeter or 10 millimeter, and that is how thick it is. For armor, it usually tends to work better when you have a foam that can kind of keep its form and rigid. Rigidity? Rigidity. That's a word I can't say. I don't technically need it to be armor armor. Now I'm hoping this allows it to somewhat keep its form but also be a little bit flattering. I think it should be as easy as transferring the pieces on here and then cutting them out. Wish me luck. Here we go. You're gonna take that robo entrepreneur neckwear and just transfer it to the foam and then cut them out, which takes a while, but thanks to editing, you will see it now. So I have everything all laid out here. I'm going to take each piece, rummel, and just round off the edges. Ooh, what is that? Hopefully it's not toxic. <laughs> Now that I look like Bain. <laughs> you nearly adopted the dog. I was born to fall by it. No, but you should definitely wear a mask for this because the little particles that all of this foam creates is not healthy for your lungs. You will, in fact, look like someone left you on a shelf for 17 years, or like you just so happen to be in the vicinity of Vesuvius in August 79 AD. Okay, start gluing everything together. Now this stuff is pretty nasty. 
brush some of that contact cement on either side. Hopefully we should be able to attach them like so. Also going to turn my little propane heater off because I don't particularly feel like going up in flames. Just not in the mood today. Ugh, troll bogies. After gluing both surfaces that I wanted to attach and attaching them, I have nothing witty to say here other than referencing that weird Matt Damon movie, so instead please enjoy this cinematic shot of glue. It does not look very flattering. It's looking a little trash can-esque, but it is flattering from some angles. Attach the crotch parts together. Let's glue some crotch bits. One pair of pants later. Here I am looking completely historically accurate. A lot of people don't know this, but Jane Austen wrote Pride and Prejudice almost entirely in a sports bra and leggings. Ain't history great. Big diaper. Don't rip. Don't rip. Please don't rip. <laughs> oh, it's like an interpretive dance costume. And I'm born. Oh, that feels weird. I mean, it's not awful. I look like an egg. Probably should have gone a little bit further up here. That's, that's my bad. After I cut this, then I'm going to reinforce these seams with hot glue on the inside. Mmm. Alright. Progress. It friggin' worked! I put the zipper in. I'm so excited. I really didn't know if that was gonna work. I think we can start adding some details on here. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> So to spice things up a little bit, let's cut strips of this foam. It's just craft sheet foam. Attach them like so. It's a little hard to envision right now. Envision. Once we plasti dip everything, it'll really help everything come together. I'm gonna get working on that. That's gonna take me probably absolutely 89 years. I'll check in when that's done. <laughs> My hobbies include cutting foam strips, then cutting those in half, then cutting those halves in half. This was way more satisfying than it should have been. Ooh. Ah. Ooh, oh my God. Are you ready to tar this bitch? Respectfully. Plasti Dip is a rubberized coating that seals the foam and allows the paint to stick better and it's also really good at hiding all of your mess ups, which is why I love it so much. So my wig came. <laughs> oh my, I kind of dig it. Make sure my hair is the last thing you see. best part of any project ever? Painting. Did you see that? Can we get a, a instant replay? <laughs> oh my god, it's so scary. Okay, I'm an Olympic athlete. Okay. <laughs> you can do it. Oh my god, going upside down is so scary. Can do it one more time. Oh! That one didn't feel so good. I was right on my spinal cord. You know, I feel like if I'm gonna be channeling Wanda, I should probably work on my back bend because she's really good at it. Fun fact, I used to do this at my seventh grade dances, like all the time. What was your desperate plea for attention growing up? I haven't done this since I was 12. <sighs> Still got it. <laughs> Pay attention to me. Although Wanda's more like, noodles. <laughs> Look out, Thanos! You cannot tell me that Wanda wasn't practicing that move in the Avengers headquarters. <laughs> yes, it's gonna look really freaking cool! <laughs> okay, now that we've had a good roll around, it is, like I said, my favorite part of any project, and that is painting. Here we have 
the bodice. Still looking a bit trash can like, but I have faith. Unfortunately, I don't see there being a lot of weathering in this project, but that's okay. I suppose we can work on clean lines. I sort of look like Jim from Treasure Planet today. Adventure and bad boy aesthetic. Oh! Oh! Ow! Oh! No! That hurts so bad! Ha ha ha! I was trying to give you a cool hot fuzz moment. Completely bent my thumbnail back. Let's try that again. mixing the perfect blood of 600 virgins shade, the Madame Bathory collection at Michael's, it got me lost in deep thought. For science, who do you think would win in a fight? Thanos, the Kool-Aid guy. I'm talking like one-on-one -on -one buff alien versus sugary beverage. No infinity gauntlet, just pure muscle. And the Kool-Aid man's glass is impenetrable. Please discuss. You know, on that note, I would, I would very much like to see all of my 90s marketing ploys band together and form their own sort of Avengers. When the world is in peril, the Trix Bunny shows up and he's like, let's f him up. Marvel, feel free to call me up. I'm full of plenty of ideas. Here's the moment my life flashed before my eyes, caught on camera. Gave me a heart attack. I tried really, really hard to make these shots nice and satisfying for you, so <laughs> please applaud me. Listen, YouTube music, I didn't sign up for a sobbing session right now, so I don't appreciate this music being played. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Damn you, Howard Shore. <laughs> when I kiss you on the mouth. So, now that I've got the bodice pretty much all painted, everything you just saw me do, I ended up redoing because the garbage paint dried a lot darker than I thought it was gonna be. Repainted it all because I hate myself. Now we can move on to the headpiece. So I'm thinking, uh, uh, oh, no. <laughs> Did I just draw Cynthia from Rugrats? Fun fact, I used to have the Rugrats movie soundtrack when I was little. Listen to it so much that the CD started burning. There was a track on there which was Angelica singing One way or another, I'm gonna find ya. And it was a slap. Wow, okay. Well, you know what? I think I'm just gonna take some paper and start drawing out shapes that I think will look nice. I feel like this is like my own cooking show. Pizza time. Paper in here, not that long ago. What did I do with it? It wasn't in here? No. Hey, past Rachel, where the frig did you put it? Who knows? That's probably fine and then duplicate it on the other side. So I'm gonna cut these out. You know what I was wondering? Hear me out. Does Vision have... These are the important questions that I need answered. Do you think Banner and Stark were just sitting in the lab pulling a weird science situation? Perfect. I suppose I could just Google it, but I'm a little afraid of the results I might get. I've listened to you, Raven. Now listen to my Raven. You're gonna hear some Raven. So after tracing, cutting and eyeballing, I drew the best circle I've ever drawn. The best circle I've ever drawn. Transferred that to foam, used my heat gun, borrowed Betty's head real quick, heat formed it around that to get a nice curve, and then the little spiky tentacle things kind of just stick out like so. To get the detailing that her finale headpiece has, quickly drew it up, cut it out, used that as a stencil, transferred that to a craft foam sheet, cut that out using X-Acto, Barged both sides, and then fit it together. Like a glove. After that was all painted, it was time to do the cape. And that is a job for... After Hours Rachel. Notice her goblin-like aura. Smudged off eyebrows. The slight stench of exhaustion and regret. 
First, you're going to want to make sure you get glitter on every available surface. We want it to look like Edward Cullen's dermatologist's office in here. Now we see the creature very scientifically approximating her wingspan. Very simply cutting out just a sort of scoop shape. More glitter that I'll be finding for the next millennia. For this, I just kind of winged it and um, just kept cutting. And with that complete, it was time for the transformation. Let's see what we can do. I have the propane heater going, so it smells like farts in here. This one's just for you, ready? How'd you like? Several screenshots of her face. Um, also pictures of Frodo because he was being really cute this morning. So first things first, I'm gonna do foundation. I'm so shiny all the time. Eyebrows. Fill and fluff in a taupe. Where their eyebrows begin, where they end. Wow. For eyes. It's definitely gonna look a little bit different when we get the contacts in. I'm gonna do what I can to make my eyes look a little bit bigger. Fake the shape of my eyes with some brown eyeshadow. Contouring. Start with the nose. Somewhat similar nose than I do, which is very lucky. I've always been a little self-conscious about the distance from my nose to my mouth, which is called the philtrum, or snot duct as I like to call it. Uh, and I have a very robust snot duct. Great for crying. And Elizabeth Olsen is one of the only actresses that I've ever seen that has that as well. Makes me feel a little bit less weird about it. A little skinnier up top. And it winds out at the bottom. It's time to put in contacts. I <laughs> really don't want to. <laughs> it's pretty cool, huh? Put on this wig. I'm very curious. Strawberry blonde slash very, very, very light red is probably the hardest wig color to find. So I did my best. Oh my. Wanda Maximoff accepts her country music award, 1972. Y'all. Why aren't you just a peach and honey? Squeeze into my costume, shall we? Here we go. I'm not gonna lie to you, this might be one of my favorite costumes I've done. I will say, however, a bit more um, showgirly than I had initially planned. Moulin Rouge kind of can-can dancer, a little saucy, you know what I'm saying? It's fine. Showgirls back then were very theatrical and we were going for a stage theater, silent film, extravaganza. I did not know if this bodice thing was gonna work. I definitely should have gone up a little higher here, but because I have this red bathing suit underneath, kind of looks like it was on purpose because everything is the same color scheme. The headpiece is kind of hanging on for dear life. You can see it in some angles. I glued one of those combs to it, but I'm having a hard time making it like stay to the wig and then also not pulling the wig off of my head. It's just kind of there for added little zhuzh. I don't know that it's immediately recognizable as the Scarlet Witch, like if you were just to see this, but that's okay. I feel like in the context of this video, you know what I'm trying to go for. I can't remember the last time I wore tights. And pink tights? Oh, I had to have been about four years old. 
The corset definitely looks better from far away, and then once you get really up close, textured and lumpy. But as long as you're far away, it's fine. And honestly, that's how I've been living my life this past 28 years, so... The paint job came out good, finally. I also had to repaint the headpiece from the last time you saw it. I'm getting a little tired of being catfished by paint because they always dry a completely different color than what you're thinking. I feel like the solution to that would be priming it with white first. Plasti Dip only comes in black and gray. Maybe next time when I need really vibrant colors, I might go over it with a priming white spray paint and maybe that'll help. I don't know. My little set pieces back here. Turns out uh, your recyclable cardboard works great in a pinch for set pieces. I'm so glad that I got to finally use my new workspace and it's amazing. There's so much space and I've actually been cleaning up after myself as I go along. If you're not proud of me, then you haven't been here long enough. <laughs> Wanda Maximoff or Maxi Moff. <laughs> That is it. I love you guys, whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every Friday. My heater just turned on, so we have fun here. And I will see you in my next video. Bye! Would you like to teach the class? Sparky too. Slaps.